Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Labs. And today we're taking a look at this fella, the uh, Micro Center House brand Inland Professional uh, 240 gig SSD. And normally we wouldn't care about cheap SATA SSDs and we still kind of don't. But the, uh, the interesting thing with this one is that if you're a new customer, and that just means a new phone number that's not in their database from what we understand, um, you can qualify to get one of these for free as a promotion. So I went out to our local micro center, snagged one, and you tested it. And uh, what do you think? So going into this, uh, I knew there'd be some pain. Usually for a cheap SSD, you're finding something at the bottom of the barrel. This one hits a few pain points that are pretty scary. Okay, and by cheap, I mean this thing retails thirty bucks. We've reviewed the uh, Lexar, was it NQ one hundred? Yeah. Okay, that's about thirty bucks too. And actually, that drive we kind of liked for really light duty. It was pretty well composed, good price, good engineering for what it is. Uh, and we actually put that in a uh, super cheap PC we bought off of uh, Refurb off eBay or Newegg or something. And for $150, built a really, actually pretty nice rig uh, with the SSD inside and uh, pretty good performance profile and Windows 10. So you had a lot going on there uh, in these times when people might need an extra system around their house. But if you need an extra system around the house, the boot drive that you put in there is kind of important. I mean, sometimes we don't give a whole lot of credit to budget SATA because it's not that exciting. Well, it has to work. It doesn't need to be very high performance in certain use cases, but it comes down to it has to work. Okay. And so, well, let's let's get to that because I think it's important. We've took the uh, PCB out. It's sitting there being held by the uh, the Eaton Zen frogs. Uh, you cracked open the case, simple plastic enclosure. Yeah. Um, the best part about the enclosure, the sticker probably? I mean, it uses brass inserts, so at least it's not threaded directly into the plastic. <laughs> I guess it could be worse. Okay, so we yanked it out because we wanted to know the controller inside because in this class especially, the controller is uh, fundamental to its success or not. Although I guess it's true, even if you go up to a Gen 4 NVMe drive, we've seen a controller be good or not, and the number of SSDs that have, that we come, have come into the lab that have the same controller all kind of act and, and perform the same. Yeah, well, so what's impressive in this category is um, if you look in that $30 price range for a SATA drive, most of the variants uh, that are out there all leverage uh, this particular controller. It's a Fizon S11, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lexar was kind of, it stood up by itself where it actually used an in-house controller and doesn't have the same sort of um, uh, negative elements that uh, we found on this controller. Right, so this board's got, uh, it's actually double-sided with NAND, which is... Uh, They're using <laughs> some really old, low-density NAND. It's a four- or five-year-old drive. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And so the technology on the drive's not great. The controller has specific set of problems. We'll get to that, but uh, why don't you quickly run us through the performance benchmarks? So we, our performance testing is a little bit stronger than you'd find on most areas. So we're testing a 5% partition size across the drive. It's a little more intensive than Chrysalis Mark or other benchmarks. Sure. So you're going to find um, a little bit less than, um, let's say, burst figures, more sustained-ish. Uh, burst should be 530 uh, read and 440 write. Is that what you got? Close. Okay. So we measured uh, 253 uh, read okay. uh, versus the competition NQ100 at 337. What's that, 4K? Uh, no, that was uh, 64K 60. read. Okay. So it's a little bit off from where it was. The fun part, though, is uh, the sequential write. Uh, we right. got 66 megabytes per second uh, write. So you're a thumb drive warp speed at that point. Well, the scary thing is we've... Uh, we've this particular brand, one of the other Micro Center uh, thumb drives, got, I believe it's two IOPS, 4K random write. Okay, well, nobody needs big IOPS out of these things. But the the other problem then is if we look past performance, which is a little harder to do given their same priced uh, options out there. Although, if you qualify for free, I mean, this is really a question of, is this worth your time and effort if it's free? So performance-wise, pretty firm maybe. 
But then you start digging into the online reports of that S11 controller and things get ugly pretty fast. Yeah, and it's not just related to uh, inland. You see it with uh, Kingston had a variant. Other the A400 out of Kingston. Yeah, other uh, manufacturers that leverage this controller and you look on Reddit or other areas and it's like, hey, my drive vanished. Or hey, one day I powered it on, it's showing that the drive size is 20 megabytes. And it'd be one thing if it was like one comment out there, but it's like spanning multiple years and the exact same sort of uh, failure mode presenting itself uh, in different areas. Well, it's hard to think that Faison cares at this point about a controller that's four or five years old. Well, I, I think in that case, uh, I think you were searching for it. You couldn't even find a reference to the controller on the website. There's a specific model on this board's not on there. Uh, but the point being is that there are many reports of it not working well, of Kevin's point, the 20 gig version. So they're 20 megabyte, like it just 20, vanished. Yeah, 20, even worse, 20 <laughs> megabyte. Uh, so if it's free and it performs well, which it, it performs fine for what it does, it's slow, but this whole category is kind of slow. Um, but if it has a data risk, a data loss risk, that's sort of fundamental to what storage needs to do, should do. So if you want it, go ahead, get it, it's free, I don't care. But just be really careful about what you put on this drive. Make sure it's a, a throwaway system, home lab system, whatever, where you just need something cheap. But if you're gonna use up your uh, promotion bonus with Micro Center, there's one other thing to consider. They have way better offers. They've got the 3D printer thing going right now. Yeah, so it was like 70 or 90 bucks off, right. uh, and that would be a much higher perceived value for um, like perceived giving it. them your phone number or your parents' phone number. And arguably uh, actual value. And these deals are all in person, so if you're outside the U.S. or if you're in parts of the U.S. with no micro center, then you're kind of out of luck. But if you're nearby, I suppose you could consider this, but as you know, as noted, there are way better options to use your Micro Center welcome bonus. Uh, but for now, that's all we've got on this inland. I wouldn't expect that we're going to do this again for, for some time. This didn't go super well, uh, but uh, glad to have explored it anyway. Thanks for tuning in.